Welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's been almost two years to it the day since I've sat in this chair. To the day. What was great is when you were here, you were promoting the launch of Gronish. Yes. And now we're celebrating season three kicking off. Congratulations. No, thank you so this much. This is really exciting. It is. I, you know what I love about the show particularly? It feels like it mirrors your life. You know, we're, yeah. we're watching you in the show playing this girl who grows into a young woman and you start to experience changes in life where it's like how you work, how you live, love yeah. life, work life, political life, everything. What are you most excited about in the upcoming season? Well, I feel like season three is the culmination of everything we've worked towards in season one and two. We've established the relationships. You know who her friends are. You know what she's gone through. And she's actually figuring out what it means to be an adult. Like, this is when the title actually comes into play because she's grown and she has a job for the first time right. for more than four hours, which is really <laughs> impressive. Um, and so I think this season, you see her try and figure out what her values uh, are as she enters the adult world and is no longer even having that barrier of what it means to just be a college student. Right. Yeah. It, it, it really is like, like a journey that we all take for granted in life because, mm -hmm. you know, we, I, I always feel like in life, we always feel like we've figured it out and we've yes. grown. We always think we're grown. Like oh, yeah. you're 16, you're like, I'm grown. And you're like, 18, you're like, I'm grown. And you're 25, <laughs> you're like, I'm grown. And then at some age, you're like, I'm never grown. Right. Um, <laughs> but, but, but when you're looking at this character and when you're looking at your character, how do you, how do you split them up? And then where do you find the moments where, like, Yara ties into the character that we see in the show? Right, I feel like Zoe's become my alter ego. I've played her for six years, going on seven years, which is surreal, and I'm grateful for that. But it means that, like, I've had the opportunity to literally live a double life, playing a character that's a year older than me. Right. It's like being in the future, but also a future where you're not in your own body, because it's like, I would never find myself in this situation doing Adderall. But <laughs> <laughs> it's useful to know the repercussions. Right. <laughs> and so I think <laughs> for me, it's been uh, like really fun to even just have that opportunity as a young human to live my fullest life through Zoe and then go back to being Yara, which is um, not a square, but a quadrilateral. I like that. I feel, so you're basically living like life you're doing all the wrong things that the rest of us <laughs> yeah. don't get to erase. And then you go like, no, that was just in the show. Yeah, and then they say cut. And, and then you're done. Back. Yeah, and it's so fun because I, I feel like Gronish was actually a perfect prep course for life because I'm somebody that um, tends to think of things as pretty linear of like, okay, you make a mistake, you learn from it, you uh -huh, move on uh -huh, and you uh -huh. grow. And there's something really beautiful about p playing a character that consistently messes up right. because I feel like that's affected my own view of like, okay, life is circular and that's okay and I'm settling into that. And college, I considered the 13th grade in which I feel like you never leave high school, you just repeat high school again, but oh, you do. You're oh, you keep, you do. You repeat it in college and then high school happens again in like the work environment. And then I bet even in an old age home, someone's in a locker. <laughs> right. Someone is being stuffed into a locker. Oh, it gosh. never ends. Yes. I, I, I am fascinated by that, that notion because like as Yara Shahidi, there's one thing people know and love about you. And that is you are truly one of the smartest, most thoughtful human beings that just exists in the world, right? And you, yeah. it, it, you, you're engaged, you read, you, you're, you're knowledgeable. I mean, Oprah literally said, I just hope that I'm around to see Yara as president of the United States. That's what Oprah Winfrey said. Like, people asking her, when are you gonna run? She's like, no, when is Yara gonna win? There's a lot of pressure that comes with that as a person. But, but you found a way to remain young while still being engaged in areas that people think a lot of young people wouldn't be, you know? Um, not even just politics. Like, I, I appreciated you, you had a post where you just talked about, like, issues with skin. Mm -hmm. And you posted, you know, just, like, a bare face on Instagram, and you talked about, like, why it was important to do that. Why do you do that? Um, well, honestly, I feel like my public life is really an extension of what's been established with my family and the foundation that I have at home. And so oftentimes I, I think what Blackish did and then Gronish did and then just being out in the world as Yara was give me an opportunity to talk about just the conversations we've had in which we're always talking about politics. We're always talking about... It was my 11-year-old brother who introduced me to all my economic podcasts I listen to. Wow. Uh, and Your 11-year-old so, brother. Yes. So and have I think, you heard these economic podcasts? It was like Freakonomics and Planet Money and a ton of NPR podcasts that wow. he listens to in his free time. Uh, and so... He doesn't have free time? He's 11? <laughs> what does the free time mean? What does that mean? I don't... Well, he also <laughs> has a green screen in our front room, so he's making films. Like, ah, of course. Yes, seven. carry on. Yes. Um, the, it's, the, it's called Esan is Everything Productions. Got it. I love it. It's a subtle title. But I, I think... <laughs> really the reason that it's important to me is that the idea of being out in the world, it becomes really trivial if you don't have a greater purpose, because quite honestly, if I don't feel like I am progressing towards something greater than myself, then I look, I'm like, I have made 22 minutes worth of content in the past five days. 
and that's, that's it. great. Right. Yeah, that's it. And so I, I think that's why it's been important that Gronish talks about issues. I feel like it's important that I'm out in the world talking about just what affects me and my family because selfishly I see my peers being affected. I see my own family being affected. And the fact that I have the, the safety right now to be in conversation and yeah. also have places where, I mean, the fact that I was 17 here for the first time right. and you've opened this platform for me to talk about the importance of voting and young people, I think demonstrates why I like to do what I do with the opportunities I've been given, so thank you. You, you. you really use them well, which I've always admired, honestly, as, as a human being. Um, because, as you said, 17, most of us would be just thinking about, well, in our country, it was like getting ready to drink for the first time, <laughs> right? Because 18 is the legal age. But, but you at 17 were going, no, I, uh, I'm looking to get people to register to vote. I want as many young people to vote as possible. Your, your excitement at 18 was like, I'm gonna vote in the midterm. That was like your thing. <laughs> it was. And you were genuinely excited about it. It wasn't was. like, this wasn't like a TV excitement. Like, Yara was like, oh, man, 18, <laughs> here it comes. My friends always said the only reason I'd ever get a fake ID at 17 was to prematurely vote. <laughs> 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 Which I feel like is the most on-brand thing that's ever been said about me. <laughs> right, and, and now you, you are, you're getting ready. I mean, 20 is, it's another big year for you. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be 20 this year, and 2020, giant election coming up. Yes. This is gonna be your first presidential election. It is. What do you hope, not for yourself, but for other young people who didn't turn out last time because they feel like voting doesn't matter and their vote doesn't count? Well, I, I think what this last year and a half, if not the past three years, have really demonstrated is why policy is personal. And I, I think through the actions of this administration, but just what we're experiencing globally right now has demonstrated why it's so much more than this theoretical debate about the economy, this theoretical debate about um, health rights and such, but why it's a conversation that takes place in your neighborhood and your community. And so as of right now, what I've been experiencing is not even having to convince young people like, hey, you should be concerned about voting. Mm -hmm. But really, it's been a matter of like, how can I be a liaison in terms of resources and access? Because it's confusing. Like, I literally had my uh, little voter handbook annotated. Like, it was a full homework assignment to figure out where to find information on policies right. and such. And I'm somebody that gets to spend, I don't know, an absurd amount of time just listening to the news and then talking to people about the news. And it was still extremely confusing for me. And so I think it's a matter of just being able to say the passion's already there and how do we translate that into actual policy action by explaining what's happening. Wow. <laughs> I look forward to campaigning for you <laughs> when you are running for office for the United States presidency. Thank you so much for being on the show again. Always an amazing guest. Season three of Grownish premieres January 16th on Freeform. Make sure you watch it. Yara Shahidi, everybody.